What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and I thought that today we would talk about the growth stock that may not be growing so much anymore. And that stock of course is Skills. Now Skills just released their Q4 2021 results and whilst revenue growth was up 61% year over year, their forward guidance isn't looking so pretty. And of course, as we all know, when growth stocks signal to the market that they may no longer be worthy of the name, well, we see a drastic shift in the share price. And as a result of that, skills on the day was down as much as 33% intraday. And actually they made a little bit of a recovery down only 21%. And I say that with a huge amount of sarcasm, right? So that was a huge drop on the day. But not only that, because over the last six months, stock is down something like 70%. And over the last year, I think they're down as much as 90%. So Skills is doing an absolutely fantastic job of emulating those stocks that we saw in the dot-com bubble. With that being said, whenever you do see a company lose 90% of its value, it's not ridiculous to take a look at the stock to see whether actually the underlying fundamentals of the business may suggest that over the long term, there's going to be a strong recovery and thus strong returns on your investment. So I thought that today we'd go through some of the results, have a look at why the stock is falling so much and just give my general overview of the business. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so to give you a little bit of perspective after the latest dip that seems to continue dipping, Skill stock is now valued at $3 a share, which gives it a market cap of around $1.2 billion and an enterprise value of around $800 million. The reason for that is because their cash on hand is much greater than their debt. And as a result of that, that brings the total enterprise value below market capitalization. Now, in terms of the range that this stock is traded in, a 52-week high of $36.50 and a 52-week low of $2.16. So I'm sure if you purchase this stock at $36.50, then you are absolutely hurting right now. And I would imagine that you've probably just written this investment off entirely. We've got short interest of 13.5%, which is incredibly high for any business, regardless of what industry they are in. So that is something that you always want to keep an eye on. And if you do see a short interest as high as that, then you better look into the company to understand why people are so against the business. Now I have done a video on skills before, so I won't go into all the details of what the business actually does, but you can see here they operate a mobile games platform that connects players worldwide. And in effect, they have users that are playing against each other, competing against each other in order to win cash prizes. So there is a sort of a gambling aspect to it as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's by and large what the business does. Now in my first video on skills, Skills, I said that the growth of the business looked very promising. The gross margins looked very promising as well. So the growth was something like 70, 80, or even 90% year over year. Their gross margins were as high as 90%. And as a result of that, despite the fact that they were putting a lot of money into sales and marketing, if they can rein that in and if they can get their customer acquisition costs down, then I said that this business actually looks pretty good going forward. And that was after this stock had already sort of dropped a significant amount. So the stock did reach as high as I think $46. I made that video when it had come all the way down to I think $8. We're now sitting at $3. So let's reassess and get into what I think about the business at this point. So as you can see here, the headline figure, fourth quarter revenue of $109 million was up 61% year over year. So on the face of it, that looks like it was probably a pretty good quarter for the business. So why has the stock crashed in effect? Especially when their full year revenue grew 67% year on year to $384 million. And let me remind you that this is a business that has a total enterprise value of just $804 million. Then it looks like we're looking at a business that is growing at 60% revenues year over year and is only trading at around slightly over a two times revenue multiple. But as is often the case, the devil really is in the detail with this business. So we can see here that the company is initiating its 2022 revenue guidance at $400 million. So that's revenue growth of something like 4%. So we've just gone from growing revenues at 61% year over year, and all of a sudden we're bringing that all the way back down to 4% growth year over year. Well, then that's obviously going to be quite concerning, especially for a business that is absolutely pumping a ton of money into sales and marketing, and yet they're only growing their revenues at 4% year over year. So we'll get into what's driving that. So we can see here that our guidance is based on an estimated reduction in engagement marketing as a percentage of revenue of approximately 10 percentage points when compared with engagement marketing as a percentage of revenue of 49% in 2021. This implies our revenue after engagement marketing will be $245 million, representing 24% year on year growth. So the headline figure that we see is revenues of 300, well, effectively $400 million for 2022, but their revenue after engagement engagement marketing, which is really what we should be focusing on, is only $245 million. With that being said, that is growing at 24% year over year. And so to help you to understand what this revenue after engagement marketing expenses actually are, we can see here that they've got revenues of $384 million. But when we come down here, we've got sales and marketing expenses 
465 million dollars and within that 465 million dollars they have accounted for effectively expenses in actually acquiring that initial revenue so we can get even further into the detail here where we see gross revenues of 384 million dollars for the full year in 2021 which did grow significantly right as something like 67 percent revenue growth as we alluded to earlier sales and marketing or engagement marketing that aspect of it was 187 million dollars Therefore, your revenue after engagement marketing is only $196 million, not $384 million. So whilst $384 million might be the money that has come through Skills as System, the reality of it is, is that $188 million of that goes straight out of the door before they've even got to think about it. That leaves them with $196 million of revenue for the year. Now, of course, bear in mind that that $187 million of engagement marketing cost is not the entire sales and marketing cost because the entire sales and marketing cost is actually for $465 million. And as a result of that, their loss from operations after they've taken into consideration genuine costs of revenue, research and development, and general and admin costs, their total loss from operations was $287 million on $384 million of gross revenue. And actually their net revenue, their true revenue was much lower than that. So of course, the fact that their marketing expenses as a percentage of revenue are not coming down like we might have hoped by this point, that is obviously a cause of concern for investors. Now we come back to this slide here, which shows that actually the mobile gaming space is growing at an incredible rate and it is actually forecast to continue growing at an incredible rate. And clearly management's sort of focus over the past few years has been to capture as much of the market as possible before trying to pivot into a more profitable business model. So we can see here that the mobile gaming industry has been growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 23%, which is much quicker than for the likes of movies, music, books, and television. With that being said, there has to become a point where investors actually can see that there is a, a path to profitability for a business like skills. So then that brings us on to the transcript. And that is where we see for the first time in the business's history, a pivot from management away from effectively spend as much money as we possibly can in order to acquire as many customers, get as many people through the door, into a more profitable business model or at least try to move to a more profitable business model. So we can see here that management has said that as we orient towards a more profitable 2022, we are already reducing both our engagement marketing and user acquisition budgets. And the result of that is going to be and already is improved customer acquisition costs, higher revenue after engagement marketing and ultimately a more profitable business. Now, with that being said, they're still actually only expecting full year revenue growth and that's revenue after engagement and marketing costs to be in the region of around 20 percent year over year now we saw that gross revenue is actually going to grow a lot slower than that up to 400 million dollars which was something like four percent year over year but clearly they're reigning in their costs their engagement and marketing costs and as a result of that their revenue after engagement and marketing is growing at a much faster clip but you really have to ask yourself whether 24 percent revenue growth for a business that is highly unprofitable at the moment and even after they do rein in these costs they're going to reduce them by 10 basis points by the way still going to be an incredibly unprofitable business Business. And we can see here that management are forecasting for an adjusted EBITDA margin of better than negative 30% coming out of the year. Now, I don't think that that's great, right? I think it's actually quite optimistic, but I still don't think it's great. Now, negative 30% is a lot better than the negative 47% that they just posted in 2021. With that being said, their revenue growth is slowing down a significant amount. They're reducing that engagement and marketing costs, and yet they still can't get anywhere near to profitability. And they're actually not forecasting for break even until I think 2024. So then you really have to ask yourself, is 24% net revenue growth? And I think net revenue growth is what somebody should be focusing on, somebody that's looking to invest in this business. Is a 24% net revenue growth a high enough growth rate for a business that is highly unprofitable and is not going to be seeing profitability until I believe at the very earliest, let's say 2024. And I actually think that that's quite optimistic. Right? We can see here that management have talked about break even in 24, but that was actually just at an adjusted EBITDA level. When you then start to add back in costs that they have stripped out as a result of or arriving at that adjusted EBITDA, so stock based compensation, for example, then you're still quite a long way away from profitability. And of course, in order to then answer that question, then you need to think about the valuation of the business. So we can see here that this business is trading at effectively lower multiples than it ha ever has since it came to the markets via a SPAC. That's not all that surprising, right? Because back here, they were trading at 40 times next 12 months revenue, which is absolutely ridiculous. And it's not all that surprising that we've seen a, a, some sort of reversion, right? right? In terms of that valuation, but we're now looking at something that's trading at a two times 
forward sales multiple. Now bear in mind that this is on a gross revenue basis. What you should probably actually do is look at that $250 million that the company is expected to generate in 2022 and then sort of work back from there. So we're probably looking at something like a four times sales in terms of the market cap and, and slightly lower than that from an enterprise value perspective. Now whether that is cheap or not really comes down to your interpretation of whether management can execute on their plan to continue to grow revenues at at least a reasonable rate whilst reigning in that engagement and marketing expense. Now with that being said, management or the management team are quite a renowned management team and they have some fairly big names in there. One of them being Vatsal Bardwaj. I may have butchered his name slightly there. He's the chief product officer and he actually came from Amazon. And they have these kind of caliber of employees right across the board. And as a result of that, you do maybe believe that skills are able to pull this off. And with them being one of the first movers in the game, if they are able to develop their brand, then over the next five, 10 years, they could be one of the big players in this space. Now, of course, as with any high growth, unprofitable business, they're going to be burning through a lot of cash and skills is absolutely no exception to that. But you've got to check whether their balance sheet will actually support that or not. And for skills, fortunately, it will for now anyway. So we can see here that they've got cash and cash equivalents of $241 million. They've also got multiple securities of $320 million. So they've got about $550 million of cash on the balance sheet. With that being said, it's important to understand where that cash has actually come from. We can see here they've got long-term debt or non-current, right, of $280 million. And one of the problems that I have with that is that they borrowed $300 million at 10.25% interest. 10.25% interest in an environment where we can see that interest rates are pretty much the lowest that they've ever been, even taking into consideration the fact that interest rates have just raised slightly. A 10% interest rate should be an immediate red flag to anybody looking in the business because that means that the banks that have done their due diligence on this company feel like they have to be paid a premium in order to lend to the business. 10% interest rate in the current environment is incredibly high. So that is definitely a cause for concern for me personally, if I was an investor in the business. With that being said, it depends on what they're actually going to use that $300 million for. If it's just going to sit in the bank, then that's an even bigger problem. But if they have plans for it, and if they can generate a return on that investment greater than 10%, well then maybe it's not such a bad thing. And they're talking here about mergers and acquisitions and other strategic investment opportunities that they're looking to take advantage of as and when they arise. So keep an eye out for that because I do believe that over the next few quarters, we might start to see what they're actually going to use that $300 million for. Now, I just want to close with this, which is what analysts are expecting for the business. So we can see here that for 2022, we're looking at gross revenues of around $400 million. And we knew that anyway, because that's what management's uh, guidance has told us. Now, bear in mind that that's gross revenue. And if you wanted the net revenue figure, that's around $245 million or around 60% of gross revenue. If we project out to, for example, 2026, we're looking here at gross revenues of around $700 million, which would be a net revenue figure of somewhere in the region of around $400 million, which suggests around a two times enterprise value multiple today based on that net revenue figure. So even by 2026, if these growth projections are correct from analysts, the business actually, despite the fact that it's now all the way down to $3, still doesn't look that cheap. With that being said, we might start to see that engagement and marketing expense continue to decrease over time. And as a result, net revenue as a percentage of gross revenue increases further. In addition to that, these revenue projections could be slightly off. And as a result of that, maybe the business grows even more than what we're seeing here. All in all though, I do think that skills has a lot to do. And given the fact that they've had to raise $300 million at a 10% interest rate, once again, that feels like a little bit of a concern. But look, skills is certainly a business that is looking to disrupt the current gaming space and as a result of that these businesses often command a premium. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on the business and until next time, thank you.